the gym, I found peace because it was almost like a therapy for myself. You know, that gym taught me a discipline, taught me sacrifice. I found something that nobody can take away from me. Yes guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. As you can see, we are here at EP Iron Jungle in Stockport, Manchester. So I'm training here because I'm going to watch Manchester United today. So shout out to Charlie, one of my clients, who uh, he has a season ticket with United and now and again he asks me if I want to go and watch a game and I'm not going to miss up on that opportunity. Um, I always say like, this is quite deep, but like I always try and say yes to as many opportunities as I can because we only have one life. And if I was to think back to let's say 10 years ago, and like young me, if you were to ask me to go and watch Man United, I would do anything in the world to go and watch Man United. Like I would drop everything. So just because I'm busy or because it's a Saturday and I've got check-ins and whatever, or I've got to train legs, like I'm not going to say no, I'm not going to miss up on the opportunity. So say yes more, uh, especially if it's things like that. So yeah, that is the plan for today. Train here, legs is on the card. So my usual leg session or lower session, I do at Ultraflex Derby. So I've got pendulum, They've got the monster pendulum here, which I really like. I've got a linear leg press. They've got the nitrum. They've got the pre-core. So I'll probably do the pre-core today and see how I get on with that. Um, I usually have a belt, machine belt RDL, but they don't have one of those. So I could do a dumbbell, I could do barbell. I'll probably do dumbbell because I prefer that. I can keep the load close to the side of my body, keep my scapula a little bit sort of tighter. Um, so yeah, that is the plan. We'll get some reels as well, of course. You've got to get reels. So yeah, sit back, relax, enjoy the video, like and subscribe, and yeah, let's get into it. So, calves and abs to start. So on calves, I'm just doing two sets there. I usually would do three, but based on how I'm feeling at the minute, I'm just taking some slightly lower volume sessions. So two sets, both with partials at the end of the sets. Then with a cable ab crunch. So I prefer to do it kneeling rather than standing, just because when you're standing, you're often limited by the range of motion that the cable allows unless you have a really high cable, so you struggle to get into that stretch position. So I would recommend if you're gonna do a cable ab crunch, do it kneeling down, put a mat down if you need to. Strap attachment's really nice, because then you're not gonna basically die out in regards to grip fatigue. Like if you were using a rope, sometimes it can start to hurt the outside of your hands, the fingers, and you're really sort of worrying about that or resetting your grip instead of just keeping the tension through the abs. So either strap attachment or even a, a, an easy bar I quite like um, with a supinated grip. So basically what I'm thinking to do is I'm trying to create as much spinal extension on the way up as possible to lengthen the abs, get a real good stretch. You should feel a really intense stretch through your abs. And then as you're crunching down, keep your hips stable. So hips basically above your knees all the way through and think about exhaling, breathing out. You'll hear me when I'm doing it. I'm breathing out and I'm thinking about curling my rib cage down towards my hips. So trying to create as much extension on the way up and then flexion on the way down rather than just moving through my hips, which is what a lot of people tend to do. So I'm just doing Watson standing ham curls. I'm not gonna do my working sets on this, but I quite like to do a little bit of almost like proprioception work just to get my hamstrings a little bit warm before actually going on to prime seated ham. I'm not a huge fan of that. If there's one prime piece that I don't love, it would, well, there's a few, but I would probably say it's the, the seated ham curl, but they've got the life fitness, which is decent, and they've got a prone ham, hammer strength, which is quite nice, but I usually do a seated ham in this section, and it's not, it's not bad at all, so I'll run with that. I did that last time I was here, so I'll run with that. I've got numbers from the last time I trained here. Oh. 
I'll do two sets on the, uh, the seated ham. Obviously, again, with the prime kit, you can change the profile. So I'll do set one, cam five, so mid to lengthened, and then set two, cam three, so more in the lengthened. Generally, that's what I tend to do on prime kit. I've spoken about it before. Like, I'll usually keep the loading pretty similar, and I'll just do two sets of probably anywhere between maybe eight and 15, especially on isolations, maybe on compounds, two sets of five to 10, 12 and just manipulate the profile with pretty much the same load or only a minor reduction in load on that second or any subsequent sets. Yeah. The trusty seat belt, I bought a gym pin seat belt about two weeks ago and I've already lost it, so not ideal. Luckily, I found this one on the floor. I'm not gonna steal it. Um, this is an assist your lift one. See, I mean, you can get them from assist your lift, you can get them from gym pin, but don't lose it like I did. I, I think, it, I, I just left it at, at um, Ultraflex Derby, but apparently it hasn't been handed in. So if you're watching this, whoever stole my seatbelt, can I have it back, please? I mean, how am I gonna build muscle if I don't have a seatbelt? It's impossible. So on the, uh, the Prime Ham, because it's quite a large machine and it can almost be a bit awkward to try and look it all the way around the back of the machine, I'll just go around the back pad. So, I'll do a third set, just based on it feeling pretty good, not feeling too battered. Um, generally what I'll do on the third set is I'll create more hip flexion, so I'll basically hinge forward at the hip to get a little bit more hip flexion and stretch the hamstrings a little bit more. So I usually will do that just on the last set. You can do it on all of them, but it does limit your loading. Like, obviously, you're not going to be moving quite as much load in a more extreme stretch. Stability is not quite as good when you're pulling forward rather than bracing against it. So that's why I just do it for the last set instead of all the sets. Yeah, what? Eight 
and two on four and a half. I think last time I was here I did three and a half with a pause. Um, that was with a pause, bit of a uh, less of a strict pause. Those last two four sets were brutal, but it felt really nice. I really got on with this. It's good. Oh. Plates for seven, slight pause, not really, just like not bouncing out the bottom. Oh, it's nice. Heavy through the middle, but it's good. I'll do a second set with integrated partials, pretty much replicating the, uh, the sets that I usually do on the Jim Leco linear one in Derby. Pretty similar this to be fair to that. That's a little bit harder in the bottom, but still similar. Obviously that was my second set on it and I knew I wasn't going to do another set so what does it matter if I fail like I know I can fail safely I got an extra eccentric and a half a rep out of it I don't mind I'm, I'm not having to then re-rack the weight back up there put the plates back on etc so if it's your last set on an exercise and you know you can fail it safely, why not?
Best capture is not having it. Just feel it like pulling out of position feels really uncomfortable. Oh, that was good though for me to not just carry on. Usually I'd just be like, I just keep going. But it feels so awkward. It just feels like this left gap to the left shoulder is just being pulled like out of its socket. And then like my whole left side of my ribcage just feels off so probably smart to just not not take that set all the way annoying but oh well i'd have let that like dictate the whole session or i'd be miserable for the whole weekend like two years ago if that happened usually now it's just like okay be smart don't take that set all the way there like my hamstrings felt nice in the stretch the load didn't feel heavy but that left side it's like i'm almost grimacing that it's like someone's gonna like pop so why risk it if you don't have like a, a lunar pad or like a big uh, hip thrust pad most gyms will have these smaller ones so i usually just put either put two together or just go and get like an ab mat and fold that up and then generally that'll be enough of a cushion so it doesn't batter your hips i say that and then now i'll be like oh here's my hip I'll just leave that at one. I usually do one on the RDL, one on this, but I was gonna do two on this because the RDL was a bit naff. But that felt really good. So I'll just leave it at one. Generally prefer hip thrust in a slightly higher rep range. I feel like anything less than like an eight to 10, I just don't really connect with my glutes. I struggle to just sort of feel as though, even with my, even if I've got like spot on execution, Heads down, shins are vertical, range of motion, you know, so that the sort of knees stay in line with the heels and so on. I just feel that like my lower back takes over a little bit and my, my quads which are both like realistically stronger body parts than my glutes. Both like physically and visually. But that was really nice. I usually do the booty builder in Derby to build my booty. This is a bit more manly. Really manly this. Oh. Especially with all the pads I've got for my sensitive hips. It's too lean, you see.
So guys, I constantly get asked, what is this? What I have in my mouth when I'm taking photos. So it's basically a Bluetooth clicker. So I do that, takes a photo. So when I'm hitting my poses, I'm chewing down on it. So obviously a lot of poses, like I'll have my, my uh, fists clenched so I can't like take a photo. So that's what this is in my mouth. It's not a whistle. It's not a device to help breathe in or make breathing harder, which people think it is. It's just a, a Bluetooth clicker. The tripod and Bluetooth clicker that I have are from a brand called Atom Tech. And it was like 20 quid, something like that. 20 quid on Amazon. I don't have an Amazon code. I have a Conte sports code, Fin10. Jack, actually the guy who owns the brand, he actually gave me a spot on the pendulum. That was Jack Conte. So thanks for the spot, mate. But yeah, if you are wanting a Bluetooth clicker to improve your photos, get this Atom Tech one with the tripod because it's uh, very good. I've had this for probably well over a year now and I've not broken it yet. So people who break tripods all the time, you just need to be more careful. All right guys, so that is a wrap for the lower session at EP. So like I say at the minute, like because I'm feeling a little bit trashed, I'm just kind of running lower volume sessions. Generally you can class it as D volume. I'm not kind of running it in the traditional kind of D volume that I usually would where I'll just do one set less per exercise. I'm kind of just assessing how I'm feeling and dropping off a little bit here or there. So like obviously the hip thrust for example, I was like, I was planning on doing two, but one set felt really good. I'm feeling pretty trash. Do I want to do that second set? Probably not, so I'll just leave it, yeah. Same with like set techniques. Usually I do like rest pauses and partials at the end of sessions. I didn't do as many as I usually would. So just kind of dropping it off a little bit, take my foot off the gas a little bit. And then I'm gonna plan a deload for next weekend, spend some time with Shannon, maybe have like a weekend away. So that's the plan. Uh, but yeah, feeling good. Currently averaging about 182 pounds. So uh, I put like an off season update on from our last video. Um, so very similar to, to then, I'm about a pound up. I think that was maybe 10 or, 10 or so days ago that we filmed, I can't remember exactly. But yeah, feeling good, uh, just a bit battered and ready for a deload really. Um, so operation, run myself into the ground a little bit for the next three sessions because I know I've got some time off. So yeah, I'll leave it there. Thank you all for watching. As always, if anybody has any questions or anything that you want to see, please just ask. Make sure you follow the podcast if you're not already. Subscribe to Once You're In, You're In. Give us a follow on Spotify. Give us a rating. Follow me on Instagram if you're not already. That'd be appreciated. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.